Hello. Today's video, we're going to explore exponential growth in a little bit more detail. Um, what we learn today is going to be that if you know that what you experience in your data is exponential growth, you only need two moments in time, so to speak. You only need two points in order to be able to find a mathematical model, an exponential growth model, that would match this two-point trend. So, to start, um, we have a relatively simple setup where it says initially we have 10, let's say, fish, and one generation later we have 12. Now, intuitively speaking, we can say that the A value or starting value is 10 right away, and we could also see, if you're good with numbers, a 20% growth. So this would easily be y equals 10 times 1.2 to the x power for a 20% growth rate, a 120% growth factor. Now that's all well and good, but here we skip and notice that uh, here I go from 0 to 2, which means there's a generation missing in my data. So I don't know if I could use the same mm, intuitive reasoning. So I'm going to have to dig a little deeper to make sure I can understand how to do this one. By the time I see the third, I don't even have the A value or starting value here, so I'm a little confused. But let's go back and see if what I can do for number 1 will help me with number 3. I'm going to take the things that I know. One of the things I know is that f of 0 is equal to 10. That means that the starting value A is 10. So that's easy enough. But the other thing that I know is that f of 1 equals 12. Now if we go back to our model, we have the y value here. f of x is y. We have the x value. We already just figured out the a value. So what that means is if I know 1 12 is a solution to this equation, and I already know the a value, I can just go like this. b to the 1 power, of course. So when y is 12 and x is 1, we just divide both sides by 12 or by 10 rather, you get 1.2, and therefore b is 1.2, which is what I was able to use my intuition to get in the first place. 20% growth rate, 120% growth factor. So perhaps I can use a similar strategy than in number two. So even though I don't know um, how to use my, you know, just intuitive understanding, maybe I can follow the same approach here to get the value for b and a here. So I already got the a value, because f of zero equals uh, four, so that means the a is four f of 2 is 15, so that means when y is 15 and x is 2, we have 15 equals 4 times b squared. Divide both sides by 4, take the square root of both sides, and that's my b value. So it's really kind of the same approach. The only difference is I had b squared times 4 equals 15 instead of uh, uh, b to the negative 1, or b to the 1, rather. Here, then, I learned a 94% growth rate and 194% growth factor, so we're almost doubling every generation here. And it's hard to see that until you actually realize if we double eight, double four, we get eight, and then we double eight, we get 16. So you can see how uh, almost doubling is happening when we have a B value that's close to two, almost doubling. All right, uh, moving on to the last one. This is the most challenging because I do not know my A value. However, if I continue with the same pattern of reasoning, that is to say, I use my x and my y in this equation, I see that there's still an a and a b value unknown. However, this does give me a relationship between a and b. Recall that b is to the negative 1 is the same as 1 over b. So instead of a times b to the negative 1, I make it a over b, and then I'm going to multiply both sides by b. So a is equal to 2b, not 26, but 2b. So, a is equal to 2 times the quantity b. So what? Who cares? It doesn't tell me one value or the other. However, I do have a new piece of information. f of 2 is, in fact, equal to 5. So that means that 5 is equal to a times b squared. Here's where the money comes in. a is the same as twice b. So I'm going to take this a right here and replace it with a 2b. And now I have one variable equation. b times b squared happens to be b cubed. And we solve by taking the cube root. Now, some of you are unfamiliar with cube roots. Uh, it's the same as square roots, only we're talking about what number times itself three times, not twice. Um, but you can find that in your calculator under the math button. I take the cube root of 2.5, and, and I get 1.3572. And then I double that, because a is equal to twice the b. And I put that number right there. And uh, bitty boom, I've got it. So the growth rate in this case is about 35.7% and a growth factor of 135.7%. So one thing I learned is uh, I can do all that using my algebra and, and a calculator to take square roots and cube roots. But if I'm going to go to technology, I can learn that the technology can do the exact same thing for me. First, I go to the plus sign and I enter a table into Desmos. And uh, that gives me... Um, 
Well, then I just have to ask it the right way. I put y1 instead of y, because this is the y1 data it's looking at. I use a tilde instead of an equals, and then a, b to the x, which is basically my exponential growth format. I just put x1 there. And look what the calculator did automatically. It gave me the a value, which we just saw on the previous page, and it gave me the b value, the same as what I saw on the previous page. So everything's going the way it should. Of course, we also have the option of using the graphics display calculator. So if you use the calculator, we can... Um, go to uh, stat and then uh, we can enter in the data so we just hit edit so I just hit enter Give me a second. and there I can see I've already taken the trouble of entering in the data negative one two two five then we go back to the stat menu again and this time we go over to calculate and we can either toggle or type option zero which is exponential regression we used to do quadratic regressions. We could also do linear regressions. Well, here we'll do an exponential regression. So I do that, and uh, it says make list one, list two. That's the x and the y lists, and then I'm going to store the equation in y1, which is uh, easy to do if you know the shortcuts. And then I'm going to calculate that result. And as you can see, it gives me the equation, the same exact b value, the same exact a value that I had when I used all the other methods. So that's three different approaches, or really two different approaches. There's other ways to get these, but these are the two that are most uh, conventional. Um, so, back to uh, the work that we have here, um, the only other thing I wanted to mention was you can also now um, do this work. This work right here is exactly the same as this work where I was giving you a table with two points on it. The only difference is I described the points in context. Like here three years ago there were 10 apes and now, the pop now there's 19. So what's the annual percent growth? How many apes should we expect in a decade? That kind of thing. So. Um, Take a, work, take a look at this work and see what you can do, see what you can come up with. And what you're also able to do is, now you know how to do exponential regressions, here's a, a trend that is kind of exponential-ish. There's three of them, in fact. So see if you can actually uh, answer the questions related to these exponential growth situations after you use the calculator to get the equation that you're looking for. All right, I hope you find this helpful. Uh, there'll be more examples and videos to come. Thanks for watching.